So what are you like at painting stone walls? Join me as I go from this to this to this to this. Hi, welcome to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. A couple of weeks ago, I built a Pico viaduct uh, assembly with five arches and four pillars. At the end of the video, however, I noticed that this isn't flat and I thought it might have been down to sort of poor modelling on my behalf. But um, having looked at it, it isn't. There's clearly some kind of um, a little bit of an error um, in the Pico mould because when I pop this ruler on the top, you can see that clearly this isn't flat and this certainly isn't um, a bent ruler. So what are we going to do? Well, sadly, I'm going to um, cut these sections apart again and remove um, some of this brickwork. If I can show you on two other little archways, then hopefully this will kind of make sense. What the error seems to be is that when you put them together, obviously these are brick and not stone, when you put these together, this, uh, this part here clearly isn't level. What's happening is this is happening here. So you're getting a, uh, you, as, as opposed to getting a gap, you're just going to get a curve in the top of the uh, viaduct. So what you need to do is obviously um, take the viaduct apart and remove some of the material uh, from this area so that they will go together uh, flat and you're obviously going to get a horizontal um, uh, top to the viaduct and all should be well. Anyway, another little challenge for me. Um, I, I've, I have a drone and I mentioned I was going to fly over a nearby viaduct with the drone and sadly that drone isn't made of stone, that one's made of um, uh, the hardened brick, an engineer's brick. It was built in 1904, part of um, the Taunton to Westbury line to avoid um, to avoid Bristol from Paddington. So I flew over this um, this uh, viaduct with my drone, and uh, as you can see, um, there are small uh, gateways, as it were, in this area here on the uh, on the on the on the viaduct. So to that end, what I thought I would do is I would incorporate um, those little, kind of not gateways, they're more like a refuge, I believe. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to incorporate it into this model and I will use uh, Will's, um, so I need my reading glasses, Will's P SR precast concrete pail fencing. So using this fencing, what I thought I would do then is cut it to fit and take out two small sections on the viaduct um, and pop it in there to add a little bit of interest. Um, also, if I find the viaduct uh, needs more extension on the end, Will's also make um, coarse stone, which appears to be exactly the same stone of which this viaduct's made from. So we'll have a good um, uh, continuation should that we need an abutment on the end. So that makes sense as well. So where does that leave us today? Well, what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to talk about um, the painting of their piers. Now, I've made mistakes in the past about painting stone, so um, let's see if I can get on any better today. Well, it's now a couple of days later, and on Catch Up, I watched the latest episode of the Great Model Railway Challenge. And to my surprise, one of the teams constructed two of these viaducts. And blow me down if they didn't have the same uh, problem as I did with the curvature of the viaduct. They didn't mention it, but you can see from these, uh, these photos, these stills, and a little bit of video, that uh, they encountered exactly the same problem. But, as long as you're aware of it, you can sort it out. I mean, it's still a, a lovely structure, um, so that, please don't let that influence you, but you might need to do a bit of uh, checking before you start gluing. So, on to painting. What have I got? Well, Good old Halford's Primer Grey is the, uh, is the undercoat of choice, as it were. Um, and this is a standard kind of, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure this is a standard uh, acrylic paint. I'll just have a quick read. I'm sure it is. Advanced acrylic based formulation of Halford's Primer. 
so that's good to go. Um, and here are the four pillars, one of which I haven't painted so I can do, do a before and after. And also on the old Chadwick, um, the Chadwick TMD, I have a something like a 10 foot run of these arches. And I've toyed with them for ages trying to figure out how to paint them up and I've tried various schemes and in the end I've just blown another coat of Halford's grey primer over it because I'd made a mess of it, let's say. So that's, uh, that's the stuff. Um, if you're around at a Humbrol shop, try to pick up one of these leaflets because some of the Humbrol um, paints just have a number on the top rather than a name, such as RC413, which after a while doesn't mean a lot. Paint brushes, I'm going to use some cheap and cheerful £4.99 pack of six Revel painter paint brushes, just a couple of those. I don't want to use decent paint brushes on this. And the paints I've got today are, I've got a couple of Vallejos, sky grey, sea grey, I've got uh, rail match concrete, rail match diesel roof grey, I've got a couple of paints from Citadel which is snake bite leather and vermin brown, I don't know who makes these names up, and uh, that RC413 from Humbrol, which is a, I think it's an intercity roof. So what I'll start to do is I'll dab some of these on, pick out some of the bricks um, and see how that looks. And then once I've got so far with um, one of these and the archway, then I'll go in for um, a black wash and see how that looks and see if I'm going in the right direction. Wish me luck. Well, that's about as far as I want to go of picking out stones. Um, this one here, this plastic one, does seem so much more kind of toy-like up close, whereas the extra detail on these pillars does make it look quite good. Um, the two Vallejo paints, the first one, which was the sea grey, is hardly visible um, on top of the Halfords grey primer, so please don't bother with that one. Um, whereas the Vallejo sky grey number 70.989 um, is this one here and you can see that one picks out quite well um, and I haven't thinned them down at all I didn't really want to thin them down I thought they might run a little bit um, I just wanted them to sit on top of the bricks and I tended to pick out the bigger bricks rather than the smaller ones um, I did put a drop of weathered black um, then in with the initial mix of the sea grey and that's what I used on these the, the blacker areas here but to be personally honest I think it's more or less all weathered black now um, but that kind of adds something to it. I'm unsure about the um, what was it vermin something or other? The, I'm unsure about the vermin brown which I put on there it tends to look a bit bold really um, but anyway what I'm going to do now is leave it to dry and then put a black wash on it and see uh, if I've got a decent starting point really. Um, when I did spray them initially outside with the Halfords Grey Primer I did not cover the, these completely as you can see there is a little bit of the um, the beige from the plastic kind of, kind of coming through um, and that was deliberate just to kind of help it help to break out the, the colour um, on its way. So I'll give this a, an hour or two to dry. I might put a hairdryer on there. Um, if you do use a hairdryer don't forget that 
Um, heat does melt plastic, so that's not necessarily such a good idea if you want to speed things along. All of these paints I've used today are acrylics, um, so you can um, you know, wash up in water, um, though if you are thinning them down, it is best to use the, um, the thinners to go with that paint, i.e. if you're going to use a Tamiya paint, perhaps you need to use a Tamiya thinners to get the best results. I'll come back in a bit once this is dry and then we'll have a go with a black wash. Well, you'd be pleased to know I've had my lunch and therefore these, uh, these uh, bits are dry and we're ready to go. And what I'm using for a wash, I'm not going to mix myself a wash up, I thought I'd try an off the shelf item of Humbro Black Wash Enamel. So we'll uh, give this a little go and, uh, and see how we get on. The brush I'm using is a... Uh, size 10 Revel. I had thought about using um, one of these um, squidgy foam things that I had with a, I think it was a plaster pack, but it doesn't go in the hole, but I want to put this, this wash on liberally so it just kind of runs down. So I've switched the, uh, um, the cutting mat uh, to a piece of cardboard and see if it absorbs it. So let's have a little look and see how we get on. See if you can see that okay. Right, so all I have to do is just wash it on and see what uh, occurs really. I'd always known that the black in that, uh, the black, um, sorry, the, the grey of the, um, the Halfords primer is always going to be too, uh, too light as the, for the brickwork, so um, I wanted to put this on and see how it kind of runs down. On, the, on here you can see there's other, there are other brick courses and what I wanted to do with those is pick them out in something called um, Engineer's Blue which is an extremely hard brick um, that you see around uh, uh, railway um, workings and the, and the like. So that's how it kind of sits and I think that's quite nice. Um, I'm still not too sure about those, uh, what was it the, I used? Snake was it snake? No, it wasn't. No, it was uh, vermin brown. But um, you can see the general effect now. And if I put this one side by side with here, you can see how much it's blackened down. Right. Now the serious bit. Let's have a little look. So again, I'm just liberally spreading it on, and hopefully it will find its way into the uh, into the stone courses. And it doesn't seem to be too thin. It does kind of flow quite freely. And this of course isn't necessarily the only um, wash that I'm going to put on. Um, it will probably dry lighter and I'll probably go in and pick a few more bricks out. And if I don't particularly like those vermin brown ones then clearly I will paint those out into something else. And again what I also need to do um, is, put a, is put some dry brushing on as well. So that's that, part me brush, and then hopefully you can see how well they've kind of come up. Oh, I'm quite pleased with how they look. Um, I'm going to let them dry vertically, and uh, so that way, that way any excess will kind of run off in the right direction, as we, as we kind of say. Um, so I'll leave those to dry and uh, get back to you in a while, uh, and let you know I've got on. Well, here's where we've ended up. This was the original, uh, straight out of the box, but glued together. There's the version where I'd sprayed it with Halford's uh, grey primer, and, but quite thinly. Then there's the one where I'd kind of spotted it. And then finally, the one I've just finished, which was um, the one with the, the Humbrol black wash across it. Now, clearly, I'm not going to sit here and get you to watch me paint all the other seven sides of these piers. Um, what I think I've done is a good start. This isn't necessarily by any means finished, um, but if I can give you a word of warning, is not to go to town and keep painting and painting it out a bit. Just, just do some, walk away, come back a few days later, and then perhaps think to yourself, yeah, I'll put a bit of white on, I'll do a bit of this. Don't go at it, ha at it hammer and tongs, otherwise you'll overdo it and then you'll sort of regret it. 
Um, make sure you leave a good couple of hours between the coats because the, um, the enamel washes can react with acrylic paints that haven't quite dried out, so be aware of that. Um, and the fine detail on this viaduct with the stonework really does work with that um, Hornby enamel. I'm so, so pleased. I could have made a complete pig's ear of this um, um, and started again and again and again, which I've done before on those arches on Chadwick. I just made such a pickle of them, but now with a little bit more experience, a bit more confidence, it's kind of worked out okay. So there we go. Um, sadly, I'm away um, from home next week, so I won't be pushing out a video next Friday. Um, so in the meantime, hopefully, there'll be a couple of videos flashing up in the corners, and obviously there'll be a subscribe button down in the corner. In the meantime, if you uh, share this on Facebook, I'd much appreciate it. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot, take care, and bye-bye.